On this week's show, BMW patches a floor, Audi promises a self-driving car soon, and the Apple Watch app you can't get but will lust after if you're a fan of both Apple and Tesla. These stories and more coming up next on 10. 10 is brought to you by freeconference.co.uk, bringing you the latest in transportation news with the future of low-cost conference calls. Make conference calls anywhere in the world for just the cost of one local call. Visit www.freeconference.co.uk to find out more. It's Friday, February 6, 2015. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and here's your weekly roundup of Transport Evolve news. It's really hard to get a good review from the leading US independent reviewing firm Consumer Reports. So when your company does get high praise, you know it's well earned. Getting it more than once is something of an honor. So when Tesla Motors came out top for the third time in a Consumer Reports survey, we're sure there was much rejoicing down at Tesla HQ this week. Previously, Tesla was awarded top marks by Consumer Reports for its Model S electric car, earning the highest rating of any car to be tested by the organization. Then it won the accolade of being the most loved car in the US thanks to the lowest dissatisfaction scores of any automaker. Now it's the turn of Tesla Service and Repair, which aced a survey of more than 144,000 Consumer Reports subscribers ahead of both independent repair shops and traditional franchised auto dealers. We're just waiting to see what Tesla does as an encore. Most likely car to make you scream while accelerating, perhaps? It's a sad yet inevitable part of life. As soon as you give any electronics device a connection to the internet, it becomes at risk of being compromised by those clever, crafty hackers. But this week, BMW confirmed that it had patched a massive security flaw, which frankly should never have made it out of beta testing in its connected drive software for some 2.2 million BMW Mini and Rolls-Royce vehicles, including its cutting-edged i3 and i8 plug-in cars. The floor, essentially using unencrypted communication protocols between cars and BMW server, was recently demonstrated to be easily attacked by the German Automobile Club, granting hackers access to do everything from set the climate conditioning to unlocking affected cars' doors without the need for a key. BMW says it's patched the problem already at its servers and now requires a secure connection between car and server to keep everyone safe. I'm glad that one's fixed. It's small, perfectly formed, and recently joined our staff fleet on the east coast of the US. Yet very few pick the tiny Smart for Two electric drive as their electric car of choice for everyday motoring. Over in San Diego, however, a 400-strong fleet of Smart for Two electric drive cars have just joined Mercedes-Benz's own Car2Go car share program, replacing previous generation 2010 model year Smart for Twos in the super simple car club. As with previous Smart for Two electric drives, the new cars will come with an incentive for any car to go member who uses one, designed to ensure that they're not left uncharged in some random part of the city. Simply return the car to a charging station and plug it in at the end of your rental, and you'll get 10 minutes of free rental next time. So if you're in San Diego, you may want to consider taking one of these fun little cars for a little spin. At the start of this year, Audi demonstrated how advanced its autonomous driving software had become by sending an Audi A7 Sportback piloted drive prototype from Palo Alto to Las Vegas in time for the 2015 Consumer Electronics Show. And while there were people behind the wheel for legal reasons, they didn't actually drive. Now its technology boss, Dr. Ulrich Hackenberg, says it will bring that very same autonomous driving technology, called piloted driving, to market as early as next year in the all-new Audi A8 sedan. In an interview with Automotive News this week, Hackenberg said that Audi's piloted drive technology is just about ready for market, but that the technology we'll see next year in the 2017 A8 won't be the fully autonomous dream some of us have. Instead, it will handle low-speed traffic without human input and will still require you to step in if things get too complicated. As for full autonomy, that's 10 years away, says Hackenberg, due in part to the horrendous, complicated legislative process that blocks the way for all self-driving cars at the moment. At the end of last year, we told you that Tesla's first battery swap station, located just off I-5 at the Harris Ranch in California, would be going live before the start of this year. A month later, and it's still not open for beta testing. But according to recent reports this week from Katie Fahrenbacher at GigaOM, the site is tantalizingly close to opening its doors to the first battery swap customers. 
but don't get too excited yet. Initially, customers will only be able to swap their car's battery packs by invitation as special beta testers, and you'll also have to pre-book your battery swap before you arrive. Swapping will also take a little bit longer than the 90 seconds Tesla originally demonstrated the battery swap technology as being back in 2013, due to new underbody panels which are a little tougher to remove. Watch this space. With just two weeks left before the 2015 Chicago Auto Show, South Korean automaker Kia has teased two images of a new concept car it plans on unveiling there. Kia, which already makes the funky, fun Soul EV, is a fairly recent entry to the plug-in car marketplace, and says the new concept car, which it's calling the Kia Electric All-Wheel Drive Trailster, will be a perfect vehicle for the city dweller turned outdoor adventurer, and will have a rear-mounted all-wheel drive electric drivetrain. Other features include a fully retractable ragtop roof and go-anywhere attitude, so keep your eyes peeled for this new ride that may take those urban hamsters back to a more bucolic life. In the automotive world, price wars are a fairly normal side effect of one automaker trying desperately to undercut another in the marketplace, and so far we've seen price wars happening with everything from hybrid cars to trucks and electric cars to sports cars. But now there's a brewing price war among the few hydrogen fuel cell car manufacturers in the world, with the news that Hyundai has slashed an amazing 43% off the price of its fuel cell CUV in South Korea. Although the five-seat CUV has been available as lease only in the US and Europe, South Koreans with enough money have been able to buy one for a while for around 86,000 US dollars after incentives, but now that price has been slashed to the equivalent of 54,000 dollars after incentives. While that price is currently domestic customers only, we'd like to remind you that it's also just under Toyota's promised US pricing for the 2016 Mirai fuel cell sedan, which goes on sale there later this year. Let the fuel cell battle commence. Regardless of your opinions on the matter, under the 2010 Pedestrian Safety Act passed by the US government, all electric powered and hybrid vehicles will one day have to emit artificially generated noise to alert pedestrians and other road users of their presence at speeds below around 20 miles per hour. But this week, we found out that the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA, the safety body responsible for setting out the final targets and standards in the law, has extended the deadline by which automakers can build noiseless cars until September 1st, 2018. While that means electric cars and hybrids, and presumably fuel cell vehicles as well, will eventually need to make weird bleeps, blops and whirs, those who prefer their cars quiet will have just a little while longer to enjoy it before they have to loudly announce their presence to everyone around them. So, even though it doesn't have an announced launch date or price yet, Apple's first wearable device, the upcoming and unimaginatively named Apple Watch, is already one of 2015's hottest gadgets, with news tech portals going crazy the moment an Apple Watch is spotted in the wild. But this week, a team of developers at LX, a, a software engineering company, have used Apple's emulated-only WatchKit developer API to mock up a Tesla app for the Apple Watch in an attempt to figure out just how far Apple is letting its developers go with its current SDK. It offers all of the usual Tesla app functionality, but happens to come on a watch we don't even yet know a launch date for. Still, if you are an Apple and a Tesla fan, you've just got one more reason to buy both. That's if the engineering prototype app ever officially finds its way into the App Store, of course. But you know you want one. That's all she wrote this week. You can catch up with us next week at the same time for another episode of TEN, or you can visit our new site every day at transportevolve.com for the latest news. Or you can join us live online for the weekly Sunday panel show at 1800 hours UTC. As usual, there's been a whole lot we haven't managed to fit into today's show, including President Obama's attempts to increase green car incentives in the latest federal budget, a Canadian city which may end up building an ice skating freezeway for low winter emissions commuting, which UK councils practice what they preach when it comes to electric cars, and the tale of woe from a Nissan Leaf owner who was erroneously charged for an oil change on his electric car. So when we're done, click this link and head to our site to catch up. And don't forget to visit our show sponsors at www.freeconference.co.uk. 
It doesn't matter if you're making work conference calls to New York or family calls to New Zealand. Free conference lets you make and join telephone conference calls anywhere in the world for just the cost of a local call. To sign up and get calling today, visit freeconference.co.uk to set up your first free call. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Have a great weekend and until next time, keep evolving.